Welcome to Not Bro Nation. What's up, guys? Hey, guys. Today we're here to review episode six of The Walking Dead. The King, the Widow, and Rick. Yeah. And a lot more other characters. <laughs> a lot more other characters, yeah. So, yeah, again, um, I, I really enjoyed this episode. It wasn't as action-packed as the previous uh, Pretty episodes prior to that. Pretty tamed down episode, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think so. it was building a lot of story for the for the season, mm-hmm. uh, the, the mid-season finale. Mm-hmm. Um, but, uh, yeah, again, um, you know, yeah, it was a meh episode. I th- yeah, I think it was just kind of to get some filler in there, kind of the after effects of what happened the last, yeah. you know, the the prisoners coming back to the hilltop. We get that. We get um, the emotion, uh, the emotion, of, the emotions from King Ezekiel and dealing with the yeah. death of all of his majority of his people, um, and just and kind of some right aftermath now. stuff. So it was it was really good. Yeah. Uh, so let's let's go into it. So we pick up the episode with Rick. Um, walking down the highway grabbing the notes out of the microwave that was stashed on the side of the road i do have to say this is one of the things that i i really loved about this episode so when you think about the post you know the apocalypse and communication um the saviors yes they have walkie talkies the the survivors they, they're not using walkie talkies no. they're using handwritten letters putting in certain spots and each of them are reading about what's going on yeah and that's how they're communicating which is really cool because you know if you got caught you know, like the you know, saviors, you get a walkie-talkie and they don't know of it. You can get yeah. to the channel and hear everything. So they're just using handwritten letters, which I thought was great. Yeah, and, and that's what the episode started off with. I loved how the episode started off mm. because what it was was various leaders reading the communication of the war from other factions. Yep. Uh, <clears throat> Rick was explaining that they got the weapons uh, or, you know, somewhere along the lines of he was making his way towards the... The next objective. The ne- next objective. Uh you know, uh, Which the kingdom said, was. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was gonna. Say, I was gonna finish my the point of how he says going to the next objective, which he kind of says, which you are, which you all know where I'm going. Yeah. So, <laughs> you know, yeah, and the kingdom is explaining their loss in their battle, and that was Carol kind of explaining, which mm-hmm. you know goes into the fact that Ezekiel's not writing the messages, but right. Carol yeah. explaining that you know they lost a lot of their people, they got ambushed, but they still won. Right. Um. And uh, Margaret, uh, Margaret. Wow, I just said Gregory's line. <laughs> Maggie, um, you know, explaining that the prisoners are there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So it was really interesting to see how they are. I mean, it's almost like they're sending a raven. They... <laughs> <laughs> yes, they're sending a raven. <laughs> but I, I just loved how they're doing their communication, letting each other know what's going on through paper rather yeah. than walkie-talkie, which those can easily be, you know, stolen and other people can hear what they're yeah, doing. Yeah, and we so. kind of saw that too when uh, uh, Dwight uh, and, and Daryl were communicating when mm-hmm. they when they shot the tire yep. with the note on the arrow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Sweet. really, really cool to see that. Um, we get Rick walking to uh, the garbage pail people. Garbage the, pail kids. You know, the, the, the heapsters as they call the, them. The heapsters, yeah. yes. And uh, the... The next scene was very interesting. We we get to see <laughs> You're talking uh, about the artsy scene. The Jadis, <laughs> yes. So she's sitting there naked. I mean, she's covered in like, you know, the I don't know what, you know, an apron. I, I thought sense. that it was like a welder's type. It was like yeah, it was like a welder's you know, thing. Yeah. It was like I was thinking it's more of an apron, but she's naked and she's making a nice Another little cat. artsy cat thing, which yeah. was kind of interesting. And there were a couple other people that were also naked yeah. there too <laughs> while they were having their arts and crafts time. That's how they hey, I've heard that. Painting in the nude is the best way for artistic yeah. imaginary. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, Rick shows up and immediately uh, and we find out why he was snapping the pictures, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Photographic evidence that they're winning the war. Yeah. Simply going in and just telling Jadis, hey, we're winning this thing is not going to work. Right. Um, you know, he wanted photographic, photographic evidence and he provided that to Jadis and said, look, we've taken out the outpost. We've surrounded the sanctuary. We're winning. Yeah. He says that. And what I th- I thought about was funny with this scene. I don't think I've noticed it before. Just how the gar- how Jadis speaks, how her intel not her intellect, but how articulate she speaks. But she speaks in a weird way, with only saying one or two. With, words. Yeah, only and... one or two words. So she was kind of mesmerized for one that Rick is alive because she was like, "I shot you." And you return. And he was like, you grazed me. <laughs> right. And then she's like, you're wanting our help? 
but I shot you and you return. He's like, <laughs> again, you graced again, me. Again, you graced me, exactly. <laughs> or I wouldn't be here. So, exactly. Like, and, and that goes to like her, back when they when we first met the Heapsters, they said, <clears throat> um, we've lived this way for so long mm-hmm. and, and it's not working. We have to evolve. Right. And so, and that, and I think that kind of goes into the way that they're speaking is like, she knows that what they're doing right now isn't cutting it. Right. Um, and they need to move on and they need to evolve as a people. Um, but yeah, so Rick basically tells Jadis, uh, you either, we need a new deal. Mm-hmm. You either join us or we will wipe we'll you wipe out. Wipe you out. And he's like, look, my people know I'm here. You know I have the number. So if if you say no, my people know what to do because Which, there's a plan in place. Now, there's a plan, and that's what bothered me is because it doesn't seem from this episode <laughs> to pan out that there's a plan, right? <laughs> or they're a little behind and they didn't get there in time. Yeah, and I don't Who know knows? if maybe the plan involved like a majority of the kingdomers and obviously since they're not there they don't have that army to rush in and destroy them right because look uh, jada says no yeah um and takes rick captive yeah takes him captive and um we're just going to finish this story yeah Yeah, so go through it so we basically see him um we actually see jadis walk up to a trailer where he's actually looking through the little people and she writes the letter a on it now if you've seen if you know what the letter a kind of gives callbacks to um one terminus when they were all getting led into the uh Kind container, of container, tra- container, train trailer, whatever, have a letter A on it. Also, when uh, Daryl was a uh, prisoner on his sweater, he had a letter A on it. Now, we still don't know what the A signifies, but <clears throat> I have a callback. I, I heard that Negan's A was for assholes. Yeah. That's what I've heard, but right. who knows. And uh, as we see, uh, before we even actually see Rick in the container, Jadis walks out and they give a low shot of the boots. And that's actually Rick's boots. She took his boots. Rick is absolutely butt naked in the trailer, sweating profusely, of course, because it's hot in there. Yeah. And that's where Rick ends. Yeah, he, so uh, his plan didn't really work out. Yeah, <laughs> and look, we don't know but the entire plan could yet. Be his plan. But he is captured at mm, this moment. He's captured. <clears throat> Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah, because look, I mean, she's not going to take Rick to Negan because no. she knows that, you know, Negan is obviously preoccupied at the moment. Right. So. Um, we didn't get anything from the sanctuary in this episode. No. no. Um, but we do cut back to Alexandria, which was nice to kind of mm-hmm. cut back. And we get to see Michonne and Rosita. Rosita <laughs> is back. Um, <clears throat> yeah, so <clears throat> as um, um, some people come in, uh, some other survivors come back to Alexandria, and Michonne is kind of loading up the car, and <clears throat> Rosita sees her, and kind of Rosita goes along with her, but Rosita, uh, Michonne has this <clears throat> feeling that she can't get out of her head. She she has to see the sanctuary. Yeah, and, and, she has to see it because yeah. she's been out of action for so long recuperating. Yeah, look, and I, I think that <clears throat> there's a couple reasons why. One, she wants to know the progress. Like, she yeah. wants to know if they're winning. <clears throat> Um, and, and two, she wants to feel like she's a part of what they're doing. Right. She's been out. She's been out for quite a while. And when she's in it, you know, she's right there with Rick, or she's got her own mission uh, details to do mm-hmm. her thing. But because she's been out of action for so long, she's like, I gotta see it. Yeah. I have to see yeah. what's going on. Now, on their way <clears throat> to seeing the sanctuary, they run <clears throat> into what appears to be music playing. Now, yeah. when they investigate further, they <clears throat> find. It is a couple of saviors. Yes. Um, and not only is it a couple of saviors, but this couple of saviors have devised or are devising a plan uh, called the Big Lady. The Big Lady. The Big Fat Lady. Big Fat Lady. <clears throat> I think it's the Big Fat Lady. Either way. As in the Big Fat Lady, uh, it's not over until the Big Fat Lady sings. Exactly. They have strapped. Now, <clears throat> think of this like if you were back, you know, early teenager years where you wanted your car to just be bumping and booming like the they, 90s they yeah the 90s <laughs> they strapped on i don't know 30 or so massive speakers to a back of a yeah, truck they, they were like the old home entertainment yeah the old systems. home entertainment systems and their plan was to drive towards a sanctuary play this loud music to lure the walkers away mm-hmm. now from what we also got is these were not s- saviors that were in the sanctuary that escaped out. These were this is kind of one of their outposts. Yeah. yeah. Um, one of their outposts that they've got word to say, hey, 
devise a plan yeah. to Another get Another thing to mention here that we forgot while we were at Alexandria mm. is a couple of the Alexandrians that had returned were Daryl and uh, Tara. Tara, yes. Uh, they had met up, and they too have left Alexandria. Yes. Now, I do want to touch on that briefly before we go back to what appeared to be a speaker factory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I do not like this part. I, I don't like it at all. Like it's it's the rumblings of Sasha and Rosita. In yeah, a sense. it They're... is. It's like a it's a, it's a revamping of the story. It's it's not to mention like you are supposed to be Rick's brother. Like you're supposed to be like right. you know Rick. He's your leader, and here you are doing something stupid. Like it's just They're wanting to get in now. He now he kind of mentioned because Tara mentioned Dwight, and she says that you're yeah. not going to kill Dwight until the end. And she said, I kind of thought they were talking about Dwight more than Negan going yeah. back and kill. They said, let's go, you know, end it now and not have to wait. Now, he could have been talking about Negan, possibly, but she mentioned Dwight. So I was thinking maybe they were talking she, about Dwight. They, they were talking about Dwight. Yeah. In my opinion, they were too. And, yeah. and basically, what she says, which was weird because she comes out first and says, I want to say thank you because you were right about Dwight. Yeah. Um, helping out. Know, helping out. Because without him, we wouldn't have got this far. And exactly. then she goes right in to say, but I want to kill him. Yeah. And look, completely understand why. Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. I do. Of course. But <laughs> come on. Like, yeah. I mean, I just didn't. I don't know. I don't, I don't, so want, those two I don't are going want Dwight right to now. die. Like, right. Yeah. Those two are going rogue right now. And so um, – like getting back to Michonne and Rosita is that they're going into the building, seeing what they're doing, and they want to possibly take them Which down. Which literally was a speaker factory. I was not making that up. Right. I think it was a speaker factory. Yes. And then, of <laughs> course, something happens. There's a tennis ball on the ground. She <laughs> kicks it. It rolls. They see it. A fight ensues. But one of the best scenes in that altercation was Rosita... For one, I when she dropped her gun, I was like, "Are you an amateur? Who drops their gun? Not her." Yeah, you know, she was trained by Abraham. Come on, but she finds a RPG and runs and does out a Daryl. to the dude, and he's like, "You're not going to use that, little lady." No, yeah. honey, honey, sorry. Yeah, and she says, "Bye, bye." <laughs> <laughs> Boom, which was actually pretty sweet. <laughs> yeah, like I slow mo it because I'm I'm interested in seeing like how they do that. How they do that? Like yeah. I know you're gonna put some CGI in there, or you might not. You might just blow up a fake dummy. <laughs> and, like you see some of his legs go, and that's it. Yeah. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so she takes out one. The other one, uh, the girl, jumps into the car. Actually, starts driving away, and they're like, "Oh crap, we just screwed up." And then all of a sudden, boom, it gets hit by a garbage truck. Which at which first I, I was, was like, "Heapsters." I thought it was the heapsters, but then it's actually I think that was obvious misdirection yeah. yeah it was actually daryl and tara who followed them and yeah. saved the day yep. <laughs> so then you know they have a little nice little reunion in a sense and they say well what are you doing out here what are you doing out here yeah like yeah. daryl and tara obviously didn't want to tell them their plan as to why they're out there right um but they eventually get to the sanctuary and michonne lays yeah. her eyes on what's going on with the right. sanctuary and i she think that it. ends them right there it ends them yeah and i but i think um I'm thinking they were tr possibly thinking of hooking up something to the doors. They, what they, I think Daryl and uh, Tara want to do is hook up hooks to the doors and pull it open to let yeah, the walkers they, in. Yeah, they want they to want those. In. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think that ends that piece. Yeah. For them. So we go to uh, Carl, which obviously is wandering around in the woods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I don't. It know, was fine. Yeah. I, I mean, it was. Fine. We get introduced to a new character, which we've seen him before in a different episode. Uh, the one guy, when Sadiq. Carl was trying to help him. Right. Uh, Rick shot at him just to, right. you know, scurry him Scaring away. away. But, uh, you know, uh, Carl's, Carl's been searching for Carl's him. Carl's been searching for him, hands him food, water, helps him out. And what it really was cool is the callback to the three questions. Yes. I loved that. I, I, just, I knew that's where we were going. Like, <laughs> he asked the three questions. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I was like, yes. Yeah. I just, I don't know why I like that. Yeah. Um, but, you know, he finds out Sadiq, uh, you know, kills walkers to, as a sacrifice to his mother. Uh, so that their souls will go on to a better place. Right. And I think it was even a callback to Lori, something Lori told Carl. Yeah, Lori told Carl to kind of always do what you think is right. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason, you know, he was like, if I didn't, you know, if my dad, we wouldn't be standing here right now if I, you know, took my dad's advice because, you know, he doesn't sometimes do everything that's right. But yeah. 
he would not want you to come back to this to our community so he's actually inviting him back to the community with him um and he's saying this because it it's his mom coming out letting you know, a good-hearted person always want to do the right thing yeah. he knows his father is good-hearted too but he is more somebody wants to come in no yeah. we're not gonna let him in yeah and but not before they get attacked by some walkers, of course. They and get, get attacked in, by and some get walkers. into some trouble. They get into some trouble. <laughs> now, at first, I thought like, okay, I know it's not going to happen, but I was like, oh god, because when Sadiq actually asked Carl and Carl looked down, I was like, oh god, did he get scratched? Did he get bit? That's what Is I Carl going to die That's now? That's what I thought too. You know what I mean? Yeah, but you but know, of course, Carl. They're not going to have him down. And really and, and, I, and at first split second, I thought, you know, is Sadiq going to be bad or is Sadiq going right. to... But again, we know Sadiq from the comics. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm thinking, nope, not going to happen. Because right. Sadiq doesn't necessarily play a big role in the comics, no, but not very big. he does have a presence in the comics. So right. um, we knew that he was actually a good person. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, he obviously is going to become an ex Alexandrian. Yep, so they kind of, the end of the, sh the scene, uh, Carl and him start walking and probably making their way back yeah so. all right so we get to the hilltop and this is kind of an interesting part of the story because <clears throat> all of the saviors are actually lined up outside outside of the walls. and i swear to god and I, i'm pretty sure i heard it when jesus was out there talking and one of the um uh, one of the saviors is talking to him i could hear walkers yeah you somewhere can, yeah. You're, you're, yeah they're in the forest they're in the forest yeah. and i'm like okay you guys are being loud and I'm sure they can smell you, but yeah. you're outside. Which, which we have two, <laughs> like, the, there's a whole lineup of saviors, but we have two that we're kind of, we know of. Right. Uh, one is what we assume is a good savior. You know, he right. was brought in to uh, help out at one of the outposts. Yeah. He was the first one to surrender, actually, at uh -huh. the outpost. Yeah. Then we have the dick, uh, yeah. who taunted Morgan, Morgan yeah. from the kingdom, the long-haired fellow. I forgot their names. But anyway... Right. The long-haired guy, the bad savior, is basically taunting Jesus mm -hmm. or, you know, talking crap, uh, while the good one is basically saying, hey, you know, thank right. you or whatever for the food. They give him right. food. Yeah, yeah. Jesus is giving food, and Maggie actually comes out and says, hey, what are you doing? You're giving away our food or water. And he's like, you know, Jesus has a point. And he's like, look, we have – I mean, what do you want to do? Do you just want to kill them? I know you want to kill them all. I know that was the plan. Yeah. But – He's still trying to keep his point as, look, after this war is over, however many survive, whatever, still gonna have to we deal still with have people. to deal with them and get along somehow. So why execute them all? Just keep them here, keep them confined, blah, blah, blah. And, of course, Gregory steps in and gives his two cents, which Maggie says, okay, I heard you, get out. Yeah, she, <laughs> she tells him to go inside, which later in the episode is Gregory sitting in the office where we now see Maggie sitting at the head of the desk, and he is actually trying to talk to her. And holding Gracie. Yeah. She's holding Gracie. Yeah. 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 Very little true. Baby. Yeah. yeah, little baby. Um, you know, and it's Gregory now agreeing with her and pleading with her. Mm -hmm. um, you know, giving her advice on what he would do. Right. Um, and I hate that he calls her Margaret. He does it twice, and I did it in this video I know. because of him. <laughs> Don't call him Margaret. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, she then makes the decision, lets them in. She builds a prison inside. Yeah. It was more of a, a uh, makeshift prison, like a, a you know, Wood and <laughs> right. I mean, you can. I mean, they got barbed wire on yeah. it, and they can hear. They can hear oh, them. That's gonna hold them in. But yeah, they can hear them constructing it. And Jesus is looking through, and uh, the one nice savior, so to speak, is like, "What's going on in there?" And Jesus, is like, "Don't worry about it." <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah, they they make a prison for them. They yeah. and Maggie says, "Let them in." Um, and then this was the part that gets crazy: is uh, Gregory speaks up about it, saying, "No," and she's like, "You're right." You know, I I said that we're not going to uh, allow. Um, kind of like she uses a she's line like, that he used when yeah. he was talking to her in the, in the office, and I forgot what it was. She was like, "I grew up on a farm. Yeah. I know how to." Oh, um, what does he say? Something about keeping the wolves, taming the wolves, or keeping the wolves separate from the sheep. Something yeah, into that something. effect. And she's like, "I know how to tame wolves. I've been taming wolves for a long time since I lived on a farm. Even not wolves, but anything else." And she throws Gregory in yeah. there. <laughs> and also kicks the shit out of the bad savior because he mouths off or something like that. Or Oh, he tries to... Uh, one of the um, kingdomers is standing near the near the, the, the opening of yeah. it. And the, he tries to go for a gun. 
And that's when Maggie hits him over the face. Yeah. Because he tries yeah. to go And he gun. also tries to escape later on. And even the good savior... Knocked the rock out uh, of his hand. Knocked the rock out of his hand. So, mm-hmm. uh, and then we get a shot of, obviously, Gregory, who's beat up and bleeding from, from being forced in. He got so, pushed into the barbed wire, yeah. yeah. <laughs> It'll be very interesting to see what happens. And I think there's going to continue to be, uh, you know, uh, a struggle, you know, between Maggie and Jesus. There's there's going to be that... Something's going to happen. That rift. That. I think, yeah, I think also something, I mean, we'll get into the predictions, but I think probably something will happen with the saviors, with the saviors themselves breaking yeah. out, I mean, you know. Yeah, I, look, you may be able to sway the, the good guy that we've been talking about, but mm-hmm. uh, for a majority of those individuals, it's, they are Negan, and I don't think there's any way of getting away from that. Mm-hmm. No, they will try their best to make their way out, no. even if they have to sacrifice a couple of throw into the barbed wire to push yeah. it down. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, so we get to the kingdom and oh, Carol. Man. Um, Carol takes on another kid. <laughs> <laughs> like, how many kids is Carol going to take on That's and hilarious. destroy? Yeah. So she she goes to where you know, King Ezekiel is and Jerry is still standing guard. Um, and she's trying to get in. She doesn't test that the door is unlocked. We find out later that it is unlocked yeah. all the time. Um, but Jerry says, you know, he told me not to not to be here, but... Jerry is continuing to do doing what his he, duty. He's right? doing his duty. He's yeah. standing guard. He still believes he's he's the king. Um, <clears throat> we do get a scene of uh, Carol and the young boy. The boy is out, and we also get a callback from that. Uh, the boy is out in the woods uh, because she needs people to fight, and she's she's yelling at King Ezekiel, "Hey, there's a plan. Rick needs us there. We have to go soon." Again, I'm and, wondering if that's and we know. yeah, and we need people. Um, we need fighters. So the little kid is out in the woods fighting walkers trying to you know build his confidence and fight and carol finds him shoots the walkers dead and she's like what the heck are you doing out here and she says don't you know that kids who go in the woods end up getting lost and end up turning into monsters sophia which she's talking about her daughter sophia um but the kid's like hey look i want to fight i want to do it and she eventually just Hands him a gun, him and, the gun yeah. and says, yeah. that safety stays on until I tell you, but you know, let's go. Yeah, so <clears> to, <throat> but, I, I believe the episode actually ended with Rick. Uh, yeah, it did. In, it the, did. in the tank. It did. But yeah. we do, we will close our review with the interaction with King Ezekiel and, mm. and Carol. And <clears throat> that is, she does go in to confront King Ezekiel, and he is obviously torn up from losing the Kingdomers, uh, his people, to losing Shiva. Uh, he's actually holding Shiva's chain. Yeah. Um, and yeah. also because he... The biggest thing is is that Carol is, you know, of course, explaining, these people are following you. You need to be the leader. You know, just put on the act again. Just do it. And that's the thing that I think he's having a problem with. One, yes, having a problem with losing Shiva and his people. But the biggest thing, I think, is that, you know, he knows he's a fake and he can't bring himself to act. Yeah, as king any longer. Yeah, like he put on this huge facade, and I think what happened was is when he was uh, being led on by that savior, and that savior was taunting got him. In his it, head. It, it got in his head. Yeah, yeah. And Carol, I mean, she was very emotional, and she's like, "Look, what you used to do, you know, doing that facade, it used to bother me." But I know that's just, it's who you are. It's who I am. That's what I thought he said. That's what I thought she said. Yeah. Like, she's, she kind of says, like, it used to bother me, but I know that's who you are. And I've learned to kind of live with it and be who I am. And yeah. I'm still going to follow you. Your people need you. And, and I think she realizes that the, the kingdom has gotten this far because of what he's done. Right. And I think she's trying to tell him that, that what you've done is the reason why they've gotten this far. Yeah. So... Why wouldn't you continue that? And she also she also even asks him, you know, why did you come and visit me so much when I was in the house, you know, wanting mm-hmm. to be on my own? Why did you come by so much to see me? Kind of referencing, you know, you came back and I and to push me, to yeah. get me to realize what I need to do. And that's what she's in essence is doing with him. And unfortunately, that scene ends with him saying, he I can't. can't do it. He's can't. like, I can't. Yeah. Um, but I think he will eventually come around. Yes, but I do too. It's trust just, the king. Trust the king. <laughs> you gotta fake it till you make it, baby. <laughs> <laughs> but all in all, I mean, it was a really low key kind of more of a story telling building episode. Definitely. Um, to the overall plan, which of course we don't know yet, but we will. 
I, I thought it was good. It was very chill, which I did like. I mean, I know you know we always and everyone else who's a fan wants to see action. We want to see war all the time, but you Look, just can't do that. In like four or five episodes. We of have that, sixteen so. episodes. You can't <laughs> just do everything all at once. Yeah, let us know what you guys thought of the uh, yeah. of episode six. Uh, I definitely it was good, even though it was a nice laid back episode. Yeah. So. Yes, guys, let us know what your thoughts are and um, kind of what you are foreseeing going forward in the next episode. Stay tuned for our predictions video coming up for episode seven. And we will be back soon. We're not Grow Nation. We're, We're out. out.